Key number one, the magus. If the doors of perception were cleansed, everything would appear to man as it is, infinite. These words by William Blake give us ingress into the deeper meaning of the magus and why in Tarot Revisioned is not represented as a magician, but rather as a magus. In our culture, we don't necessarily even know what a magus is, but a magus is a wisdom teacher, a way shower, one who indoctrinates and initiates us into our own instrument, into our own system. He is not a trickster. He is not the magician with the sleight of hand, but actually that which offers us the opportunity to enter into our own deeper wisdom. This is why the knowledge of archetype is so important because archetype has to do with primary structure. Again, why I use the piano as the analogy and why the tarot are 22 keys. F is not G, A is not B. The magus is not the high priestess. And as obvious as that seems, oftentimes when we think, we confuse all of these qualities and they appear as one clump. And therefore it's charged and we don't know exactly what's being triggered. This is why the magus is so helpful because his story is about the learning of discernment. And this is why he leads the arcana, the arcana arcanorum, the secret of secrets. Now think about a secret. A secret is not something that's given to you simply because you show up. A secret is something that you are given clues to that you yourself must unravel. And so this is why the shape of a seed is so important. And we will begin to see that the seed is repeated not simply in the Magus, but in his counterpart, the next key, key number two, the High Priestess. We will see that he is the outside and she is the inside of the egg, of the seed. We will begin to see also the relationship of the Lemnus Gate, or the figure eight, as above, so below. This is a basis of Hermetic philosophy, as above, so below analogy and correspondence. Because in the picture language, in tarot, we are learning a different language. We're learning an instrument, not a belief system. And therefore, as we learn it, we begin to understand that for certain questions, we must use certain keys and that they will anchor us. And therefore, the magus, in this brief introduction, is offering us an opportunity to not see things as a magician, meaning a trickster, but actually as a magus, the seeking of a deeper wisdom. And that's why the key is in the polarity of life and death, and this is what it signifies, we are bound between these two polarities. So constantly we are asked, what do you attend to? Those things that you fear, the darkness that brings you down, or that which is of life of possibility? Because remember, a seed is planted, not knowing its journey, but with the potentiality that honors life itself. So our sense of life allows things to grow. And he would say, the magus, your sense of death, your sense of fear, will keep you from entering into the deeper questions because life allows a certain vulnerability that says, take the adventure. The rest says, no, I'll wait to be convinced. But the magus says, take the adventure. I am the first key. Welcome to who you truly are. It takes a little work but you'll find your instrument far more interesting and you'll find your connections far more profound when you begin to see that you are not simply one. You are one that is many that actually seek to create the greater you. The Magus, key number one, tarot revision. <laughs>